Hello guys welcome back to our anime explainer. Today is explanation of upcoming episode Throne of Seal based on novel. Guys please like the video and subscribe to my channel. So let's start. The reason why the Temple Alliance dared agree to let those demons in was that they didn't fear letting them obtain more spiritual stoves. When fusing more than three spiritual stoves, the danger would be enormously high and the chances of success infinitely low. And moreover, the illusory paradise in itself rejected the darkness element. However, the Temple Alliance and the higher-ups of the Priest Temple didn't expect that the demon god Emperor could meddle in this way, saving those demon powerhouses and ruining their plans totally. And this time, the demon powerhouses killed the great majority of the demon hunters that entered. In terms of damage, both parties lost a lot, but the demons lost a lot more. It was after all only successors from various demon gods that died in this trip. Lumps of feeble light set in movement autonomously, taking the shape of green balls floating behind everyone's back. Following them were flickers of green light that covered their bodies, disappearing along. Long Houchen was the last to disappear. Yi Xiaolei waved her hand to him, declaring gently the words, thank you. How could she possibly be unable to differentiate good from evil? It was just that she was an extremely stubborn person, who refused to acknowledge it out of her own mouth. Bizarre changes happened on everyone, who became alone in a green space, only filled with endless green and applying an unsurpassable binding. Unable to leave from this place, everyone completed their own assimilations of spiritual stoves in a cross-legged position. Since everyone absorbed a different amount of spiritual stoves, the process of assimilation was naturally different for all of them. The trial to start this process was directly cancelled by Yi Xiaolei, thus they were saved from this trial and would directly be brought to fuse their own spiritual stoves. Among them, the one who had the most effortless time was undoubtedly Long Houchen. He didn't get any new spiritual stoves in the illusory paradise, and thus only remained here for a bit, before leaving for the next space with a flicker of light in the midst of green undulations. Then, his last trial for the fusion of spiritual stoves began, the others didn't have such an easy time. For the process of the assimilation, Wang Yuanyuan and Caia obtained only one new spiritual stove while the others all had two spiritual stoves to assimilate completely. Although it went by the sequential order, assimilating several spiritual stoves normally required one to pass through a quite considerable difficulty. Kia rapidly fused with her spiritual stoves. As the wielder of the constitution, as the saint daughter of Samsara, and the only other gods chosen one apart from Long Houchen, fusing a spiritual stove of same attributes as hers was totally lacking in challenge, even if this was already the third spiritual stove that she absorbed. The spiritual stove Kia absorbed this time could naturally not compare with her own spiritual stove of samsara, but it was of the same tier as her thousand strikes spiritual stove. This spiritual stove bore the name of Real Shadow. It was only fitting to be used by assassins, because only assassins with the doppelganger ability could display the full power of this spiritual stove. When used, Real Shadow would enable to make the afterimages created by an assassin real. In its original state, the spiritual stove of real shadow would produce these effects for a duration of roughly three seconds, but as it would keep evolving, this duration would increase. Its greatest utility was the ability of making afterimages real, giving them the same fighting power as their user. Although only lasting for three seconds, its effects were undoubtedly game-changing in some crucial times. Compared to Saima's yarn, Lin Shin was a lot more blessed. His two spiritual stoves complied to ally with him to an astonishing degree, to the point that he didn't have to take any initiative, and yet the two spiritual stoves started to be assimilated into his body at the same time. Given how Lin Shin's control over fire element was astonishingly high, this assimilation was as comfortable as a fish swimming in water, only taking less than half an hour more than Wang Yuanyuan. After completing the assimilation of the two spiritual stoves, he became transported to the green pool. The heart of flames aside, the other spiritual stove he obtained was called spiritual stove of flame eagle, an exceptional offensive and defensive-oriented dual spiritual stove. The spiritual stove of Flame Eagle can set free an immense eagle of flames to help him in attack and defense, and can be controlled entirely by the use of the spiritual stove of Flame Eagle and the spiritual stove of Heart of Flames attained a high level of compatibility, which was the important reason that enabled him to assimilate the two at the same time. The assimilation went smoothly for Han Yu too, who gained the two spiritual stoves known as Spiritual Stove of Guardian of Light and Spiritual Stove of Light Assemblage. One was mainly a defensive spiritual stove, while the other one was mainly a supportive spiritual stove, and both were relatively peaceful spiritual stoves. In addition, these two spiritual stove he assimilated directly increased the user's cultivation. Thus, in the process of fusion, 
Han Yu felt his own strength rise gradually, while his innate internal spiritual energy reached the level of 80, which he vaguely felt. In the later fusion of the spiritual stoves, he would most likely become the one for whom it would go the most smoothly. Chen Ying's assimilation was actually quite harder than expected. The scapegoat spiritual stove aside, she gained another spiritual stove fit for summoners called time-producing spiritual stove. Relying on it, one could extend the duration of a summon's ability and its persisting time. Simply said, used on McDull, his strength would persist for 20 minutes instead of 10 after absorbing a magical crystal. This was a very useful ability, and with its addition atop of the dual summoning ability of the scapegoat spiritual stove, Chen Ying's strength was bound to gain an enormous increase. However, assimilating these two spiritual stoves was far from an easy matter, and they weren't even of congenial attribute, naturally making their absorption difficult. However, Chen Ying's temper was actually relatively opposite to Wang Yuan Yuan. Wang Yuan Yuan was a strong person on the surface, but actually soft and sensitive inside, whereas Chen Ying looked weak on the surface while being tough in temper. Long Haochen's group had obtained such a great opportunity, but it was still too early to say whether they would be able to benefit from it. Soaked in the green pool, Long Haochen was in a sudden calm state of mind. After his awakening as a god's chosen one, his mind was even more focused, and reached an optimum state very easily. Immediately, he sensed his own body being wrapped in the vital energy, permeating him gently. This energy of life entered his body slowly, or at least it felt like it. This harmless and beneficial energy merged with Long Haochen's liquid spiritual energy, enforcing his body and mind, and soon he reached a complete level of relaxation. All his muscles and energy channels actually went all limp at this time. Gradually, this soft vital energy covered his whole body, before slowly rushing into his chest. There, it slowly subsided. The light elemental fairy Yating was seated inside the saint spiritual stove, as this thin green-colored vital energy was poured into the saint spiritual stove. Immediately, a mysterious change was produced. Both of Yating's hands started to adopt a particular pose. As her face revealed a happy expression, she entered a special state. A soft white radiance was emanated by the saint spiritual stove, producing white circles which spread inside Long Haochen, who suddenly felt his own brain go dizzy. On his chest, he felt a heating sensation, but this didn't affect his focus state. The liquid spiritual energy in his body was noiselessly consumed at an astonishing speed under this cozy feeling, and in this green pool, his vital energy kept strengthening. But this didn't help in increasing his internal spiritual energy. It seemed that time didn't pass in this place, and Long Haochen felt the warmth in his chest increasing until it reached a burning hot level. After gradually reaching this state, it produced a blazing feeling, as if a fireball was violently ignited inside his chest. At the same time, Kia was also seated in the green pool. She was a bit pale, and sweat was rapidly dripping down from her face. Around her, some grey streams of air were undulating, and the breath of life felt somehow incompatible with the intense killing intent. Under her terrifying killing intent, her clothes had actually completely faded away, and her pure white skin was continuously covered with sweat. It could be clearly seen, that at the middle part of her chest a surge of ash-grey glitter emerged unceasingly, causing the surrounding killing intent to rise continuously. Although Long Haochen's spiritual stoves had both evolved several times, Kia after all had three stoves, of which one had just evolved. The difficulty of fusing three spiritual stoves was exponentially higher than doing the same with two of them. Thus, even though Long Haochen's two spiritual stoves had evolved for a total of five times, the pain he had to bear was far from the one endured by Kia. Different people were bound to have totally different experiences during the fusion of their spiritual stoves, and this was still valid even if two people didn't differ so much in cultivation, or in the spiritual stoves they had assimilated. This was because the state of mind had a great impact on the process of fusion. Kia was undoubtedly filled with an unswerving determination, and this became the case especially after she followed Long Haochen. The gloom in her had gradually been illuminated by his radiance, which could be said to have improved her nature. Indomitable when facing difficulties, she would keep fighting as long as it was for Long Haochen's sake, and never slack off at any time. On the demon's side, the ten chosen candidates were young powerhouses of great lineage, whereas from the Temple Alliance ten promising demon hunters, including the Sign of Light and the Saint Daughter of Samsara, had participated. Therefore, both sides were nervous beyond compare. As soon as they saw a figure emerge from that dark green shrine, Ling Xiao and Huang Shuo couldn't help but stand up and swiftly rush to the lakeside. Both parties' powerhouses were in a state of mutual hostility, and in case any change occurred, 
a battle could very possibly break out any moment. Long Houchen was walking in the front, and seeing him, Han Qian felt a great load fall off from his mind. Unconsciously he gave a look to the temple knight who calmly watched Long Houchen, making good preparations in case of the demon's possible attacks. Behind Long Houchen followed Kia, and then came Zhong Fang Fang. Ying Suifeng and Ling Xiao relaxed at the same time. No matter what one could say, the most important thing was that the sign of light, and the saint daughter of Samsara returned safely. And looking at them, they undoubtedly didn't come back empty-handed. However, Ling Xiao's expression rapidly grew unsightly, because they were the only three to come back from the illusory paradise. As for the captain of the Black Dragon's Imperial Guard Huang Shuo, his expressions grew all the more unsightly. The fact that the humans were the first to come out was no good news to him. Rapidly, Long Ho Chen's group of three returned to the side of the Temple Alliance, the others didn't come out yet. Ling Xiao asked Long Hao Chen. Long Hao Chen let out a sigh, lowering his head. His expression already told a lot to Ling Xiao. Ling Xiao's face immediately looked ashen. These had been demon hunters from Commander Grade Demon Hunt Squads. Their loss implied that seven demon hunt squads were in danger of breaking apart, and the blame for this would be for the priest temple to bear. Long Houchen coldly looked at the demons, saying in a severe tone, the ten demons that came this time had all suppressed their cultivation, and none of them were powerhouses below the eighth step. Their external spiritual energy reached 20,000 units for each of them. Under these circumstances, we were basically no opponents. What? Ling Xiao lost his voice in surprise. On the other side, Han Qian pulled Long Houchen's sleeve, signalizing him not to say anything further. Without a doubt, the blame that the priest temple would shoulder this time was enormous, because they were the ones to initiate this collaboration with the demons. Long Houchen turned his head to look at Han Qian, nodding to his ancestor, and showing his understanding. Ling Xiao's aura became visibly unsteady. The human powerhouses from the side of the temple alliance all started to turn hostile, and were ready to attack at any time. However, Huang Shuo's side didn't shudder in fear. As the captain of the Devil Dragons, he reached the conclusion that they surpassed the human group as a whole, and that these opponents were nothing to fear. However, Huang Shuo still did his utmost to suppress the killing intent filling him, because he had clearly sensed over these days that a formidable presence was concealed among the enemies. Its terrifying threat even shocked him. It seemed to him that as long as they acted against the other party, a risk of suffering destructive damage would befall them. In fact, Huang Shuo wasn't an ordinary powerhouse of the ninth step. His strength already reached the peak of the second rank of the ninth step, his total spiritual energy reaching close to 300,000 units. Even for the demons, this level was attained only by a few powerhouses. He acted as the representative of the demon god emperor and yet perceived the enemy as a threat. So this hidden powerhouse had to reach a terrifying level of strength. With him here, in case a battle broke out, the damage their demon group would sustain would certainly be considerable. They were after all in the human territory. On the other side, Huang Shuo's look became all the more ugly. Of course, he recognized the owner of this magical crystal. Although the owner of that crystal wasn't the most powerful demon that participated this time, he was still at least among the top five in overall strength. No matter what, he had no idea how this crystal could have fallen into Long Houchen's hands. Seeing his appearance, he didn't reach twenty years in age. Humans and demons were not the same, and he could tell his rough age at a mere glance. Indifferently, Long Houchen produced a brilliant flicker of light, as his eyes were filled with an ice-cold look. The stare he gave Huang Shuo didn't give off a weak impression, at least, three human survivors left the illusory paradise this time. As for you, reaching this point, he deliberately paused his words. Even if Huang Shuo was calm, he still couldn't help but be in great turmoil at that time. Looking at the distant illusory shrine, he immediately became pale. In fact, this time only demons acting as successors of the top four demon gods had participated. It was for the sake of obtaining some spiritual stoves while obeying a secret order of the demon god emperor that they came. If these successors had all died in the illusory paradise, the blow inflicted to the demons would be incomparable. It would possibly even shake the foundation of the demons. Since Long Houchen took out one crown of heritage, who said that he wouldn't have other crowns of heritage? Hearing his tone, Huang Shuo's group was not optimistic about the situation of their team in the illusory paradise. Speak, what happened to them? Huang Shuo reacted in fury, while his threatening aura abruptly rose. The terrifying oppressive power almost instantly reached its peak, 
and even in the entrance to a living heaven filled with vital energy like illusory paradise, the whole area was filled with darkness instantly. At the present time, the demon god emperor of the devil dragon clan had only two children, Arbao and Ling Xiao, and both had entered the illusory paradise this time. In his opinion, given Arbao's strength, he wouldn't possibly have encountered any trouble in the illusory paradise, no matter the circumstances. The reason those three humans were still alive could only be out of his leniency. They were bound to return with great gains from this trip. This was the important reason why the demons were willing to pay such a great price for the chance to enter the illusory paradise. However, he absolutely didn't expect this twist. It could indeed be seen that the casualties on the human side were disastrous, since only three of the ten that had entered returned alive. And judging from Kia's appearance, she was surely in a very weak state. But more importantly, none of the demons from their group had yet returned alive. The greatest disadvantage of the demons during this operation was their lack of understanding regarding the illusory paradise. All the understanding they had was issued from the demon god emperor's deductions, as well as the predictions from the star demon god. No matter what could be said, at least Arbao and Ling Xiao hadn't come back yet, and there was still the daughter of the moon demon god to consider. The moon demon god's side was still better off, since this time, it could be said that Yui got a place only because of her relationship with Arbao. But none of the devil dragons could be afforded to be lost. Although the demon god emperor was still young in age, his reproducing ability had reached the state where he couldn't possibly have other children. Under these circumstances, if Ling Xiao or Arbao were to have died in battle inside the illusory paradise, this would be a devastating catastrophe to the Devil Dragon Clan. Since time immemorial, the Devil Dragons were led by the successive generations of demon god emperors, inheriting the pure lineage of the Devil Dragon bloodline. Never before had a demon god emperor of another bloodline been chosen, and atop of that, Arbao had already gained a definite prestige within the Devil Dragon Clan. It reached the point that if they had died in battle, the demon god emperor was bound to be totally furious, and could only take out his anger on him and his group. For this reason, Huang Shuo's eyes looked red. He appeared calm, but was only filled with ideas of cruelty and slaughter. He was already prepared to blow these opponents to kingdom come, and would rather die here than return and bear the fury of the demon god emperor. After giving Huang Shuo some hope, he naturally wouldn't enter a fight to the death. And not telling him the complete truth about the situation was naturally to get some more profit from the demons. Regarding this point, Ling Xiao and Han Qian were all very willing to see that happen. The loss of seven outstanding young demon hunters was a considerable blow to the alliance, and even if their seven demon hunt squads didn't end up entirely dissolved, they were bound to need some rearrangement. Under these circumstances, if they couldn't get some benefits from the demons, let alone the responsibility the priest temple would have to bear, even Han Qian wouldn't be able to escape taking responsibility. And given the nature of these two, they wouldn't possibly try to avoid shouldering it. Naturally, hearing Long Houchen's words, Huang Shuo's mood stabilized a bit, and raising his hands, he signalized his subordinates not to act rashly without thinking. Walking alone, he advanced in the direction of Long Houchen and stopped about 20 meters away from Ling Xiao, to tell me about their situation, what do you want from me? Huang Shuo asked coldly. Long Houchen replied in a tranquil voice, I want ten crystals of devil dragons. You should have quite a few of these things, don't you? What did you say? In fury, Huang Shuo instantly projected killing intent towards him, all of which was blocked by Ling Xiao. The crystals from the devil dragons were not the same compared to dragon ointment. Dragon ointment was a special substance that devil dragons would secrete naturally, serving as a fabulous tonic to humans and demons. But magical crystals weren't the same. Every single magical crystal from the devil dragon clan was not only a treasure, but could also be a symbol of the devil dragon's ancestors. When one devil dragon powerhouse would pass away on the battlefield, all others would use every possible method to retrieve its corpse to return it as an offering to the devil dragon clan. Even the devil dragons himself wouldn't use their own clansmen's magical crystals unless encountering a life-threatening situation, to say nothing of giving it to humans. In the whole demon history, the times humans had obtained devil dragon crystals only numbered very few, and each of them had provoked a frantic counterattack from the demons. Even the demon god emperor would personally handle the matter in some cases. Long Houchen indifferently repeated his own words, emphasizing them this time even further, I want ten devil dragon crystals. And I want them immediately. The illusory shrine is on the verge of submerging, so there's still time if you give me the magical crystals now, otherwise, 
if we wait for the illusory shrine to submerge, there will be no use even if you want to give them to me at that time. Let me emphasize that I don't want any demon to take offense or act against the Temple Alliance after I obtain these ten magical crystals, because it is a deal and not me taking them by force. Huang Shu almost spouted out his own blood. What did this kid take the Devil Dragon's magical crystals for? Mere sweets. Taking these by force. Just try if you dare. Turning his head to look at the illusory shrine, there was some truth in what Long Haochen had just said. The dark green radiance released from the illusory shrine started to gradually become weaker, and it seemed to be in the process of blending back into the lake soon. Before, Ling Xiao had said that a fairy dragon had been living in the lake for several dozen thousand years. Huang Shu did not even have the slightest idea of its strength, but perhaps even the demon god emperor couldn't be sure to fight it victoriously. And even more importantly, at that time, would Arbao's group still be alive? If this time, there had only been devil dragons around, things would have been better off, but that wasn't the case. There were many powerhouses from other clans present. These words from Long Haochen were just too vile. At this time, the looks the powerhouses gave Huang Shuo and the Devil Dragon Guard completely changed. This was Long Haochen's brilliant plan. The great demon forces that came consisted of all kinds of powerhouses. More importantly, this time, among the demons that participated, were successors of different clans. For this reason, these powerhouses were very concerned about the information, further adding the fact that this time, Long Haochen only asked for magical crystals from the Devil Dragon clan. The other powerhouses immediately had a change in their attitude. In spite of how powerful the Devil Dragons were, they didn't dare say anything. However, a certain sentence came to their minds. For the sake of your crown prince, is it that you are not willing to pay the price of your lives? Moreover, he's the successor of our entire race. Huang Shu was trapped in a terrible predicament. After a short time of silence, Huang Shu coldly looked at Long Haochen, three crystals. I can only take out three of the crystals from my clansmen and give these to you as exchange. Do you even have any proof that you could cause the illusory paradise to disappear temporarily and prevent my people from coming out? Long Haochen gave him an indifferent smile, three is impossible. I want only ten, and not a single more. But a single one less won't do either. Elder Huang, you should make up your mind as quickly as possible. Look. Saying these words, he pointed at the illusory shrine. Sure enough, at this time, the thorny undergrowth linking the illusory shrine to the shore had started to disappear. The bushes in the direction of the shore shrank down, and the outlines of the illusory shrine started to sway slightly like a mirage, Yu Huang Shu turned pale with fright. If all the young demon powerhouses that entered had died in battle, he would admittedly certainly take the blame, but this would be only the blame for this specific matter. However, after Long Haochen said these words, his responsibility wasn't that simple any longer. It seemed even possible that the successors of this many demon gods would have died because of his commanding error. At this time, the common anger would even be taken out on his family, come. Huang Shu shouted loudly. It seemed indeed strange that after this shout, the illusory shrine suddenly stopped to descend into the waters. From behind Long Haochen's back, Zhong Fang Fang advanced to his side, raising up both of his hands before calmly yelling, Ten, just as no one seemed to have understood what he meant, he retrieved a finger. 987 crap. A countdown like this. How fierce. Han Qian and Ling Xiao looked dumbstruck at Long Haochen and Zhong Fang Fang. Let alone Huang Shu, even the two of them were nervous. Weren't these stenchy youngsters a bit too bold? But no matter whether they could control the enemy's intentions or not, their cooperation was just flawless stop counting. Huang Shu shouted in fury, waving his right hand and letting a light yellow leather bag fly in Long Haochen's direction without reducing any of the immense pressure he emitted. In a flash, Han Qian appeared in front of Long Haochen and recovered the leather bag. Opening it to look inside, he immediately saw a strong dark green radiance being released. Han Qian blanked out, wearing a feverish expression, before swiftly closing the bag. He nodded in Long Haochen's direction. Indifferently smiling, Long Haochen looked at Huang Shu in amazement. I didn't expect Elder Huang to have really brought so many good things. Then I won't stand on formality. Thanks a lot. He was actually asking for such sky-high prices, and had Zhong Fang Fang pressure him with this countdown, so that Huang Shu would let go of his greatest treasures, but didn't expect him to really have what he asked. Hurry up and speak. How are Arbao and the others? Huang Shu shouted in rage. 
he was already on the verge of exploding, and could start attacking at any time. Right at this time, the powerhouses from the Temple Alliance were just as nervous, and that concealed Temple Knight, who had had a small talk with Han Qian stared at Huang Shuo coldly, aiming his oppressive power directly at Huang Shuo. The others didn't perceive anything, but Huang Shuo was stifled by the extremely tyrannical oppressive power. Before drawing a few steps back, his face changed once again despite himself. To be able to suppress him to such degree, perhaps only the top ten ranked demon gods were able to do that. Although if he went all out, he had some confidence to give the opponent a hard time, he would inevitably die in the end. Long Haochen also knew that he couldn't keep infuriating Huang Shuo at this time, saying in deep voice, we humans abide by our promises. Since I obtained what I wanted from Elder Huang, I will naturally tell you everything I know. Within the illusory paradise, we have run into your group of demons several times. The rest of our group was killed by your demons, and the crown of heritage in my hand belonged to a blue flame fiend. The other demons weren't killed by us, but have opposed the illusory paradise by themselves, causing the insurrection of the magical beasts living there, that went all out to dispose of them. Because the three of us haven't harmed any of the magical beasts residing in the illusory paradise, we haven't been involved in the retribution that took place before we appeared. Among your group of demons, the deaths count a few, and the rest have been saved by your demon god emperor. Hearing this reply, although Huang Shuo felt a lot more relaxed, he almost spat out his blood in response. It was for such an information that he had paid ten magical crystals. Long Haochen pretended to remember about something, before declaring openly, oh, there's still more. I remember that an orange-clad demon was ordered to do something, after which a special orange spell was cast that confined the guardian of the illusory paradise for some time. But the user of this orange spell self-exploded, and his crown of heritage was recovered by our bow. What? This time, two orange-clad mags approached. Their long orange hair classified them as powerhouses from the star demon clan. At this point, those two who had had stagnant faces until then immediately revealed their shock, the technique of great prophecy. Arbao actually ordered him to use the technique of great prophecy. Very clearly, Long Haochen's declaration wasn't wrong. They could tell because his description of the technique of great prophecy wasn't the least bit wrong. More importantly, only the technique of great prophecy could show such formidable utility, like to actually confine the guardian from this place, Huang Shuo, you owe us an explanation on this matter. Otherwise, you will have to justify yourself before the star demon god. Two star demon clan powerhouses approached him in rage. Huang Shuo's expression grew all the more unsightly. Only he knew what kind of mission the demon god emperor had given to Ah Bao. He also understood that the reason why Long Haochen chose this timing to cite this detail was that he wanted to sow discord among their ranks. Still, he had no way to refute his words. At once, changes appeared in the atmosphere on the demon's side. This time, although the main force consisted of guards from the Black Dragon Army, the powerhouses from other races weren't few. And they were all elites from their own clans, among which some lesser lords also had joined. Since Arbao had allegedly ordered the man from the Star Clan to use a forbidden self-destructive spell such as the technique of great prophecy, how would he deal with his clansmen? At once, the demon group started to lose its unity. Huang Shuo's face changed color, before giving a fierce glare to Long Haochen, deeply printing the appearance of this young man in his own mind, before turning his head towards the two powerhouses from the Star Demon Clan, this matter isn't totally clear for now, but if our young master has been saved by his highness, I will definitely give an account to the senior Star Demon God. However, we are currently still unable to ascertain whether this human is saying the truth. And right at this time, the illusory shrine slowly sank, submerging back into the lake. Even if they wanted to go inspect and verify, this couldn't be done anymore, to say nothing of the fact that they were unable to even enter the illusory shrine. Screened behind Ling Xiao and Han Qian, Long Haochen slowly retreated, and moved in the midst of the powerhouses from the Temple Alliance. Huang Shuo gave these humans an unreconciled glance, furiously ordering, let's go. After saying that, he led the demon powerhouses away. Ling Xiao didn't immediately leave the illusory forest, but called Long Haochen, Kia and Zhong Fangfang to ask them carefully about everything that had happened in the illusory paradise. Just like Huang Shuo wasn't certain of the chance the demon god emperor had to win against that fairy dragon, Ling Xiao couldn't make sure either about whether that fairy dragon could really protect the illusory paradise. Reaching this point of thought, Ling Xiao's face clearly looked pale. After some time of hesitation, 
he instructed some of the powerhouses from the Southern Mountain City to stay behind to protect the illusory forest, and after giving some orders to report any news to him, they finally brought everyone back to the Southern Mountain City. Although Han Xian was surprised over the fact that the demon god emperor could tear through the space of the illusory paradise, he currently was still in a pretty good mood. 10. These were a total of 10 devil dragon crystals. As magical crystals from devil dragons of the ninth step, these things were rare treasures. It could be said that each devil dragon crystal could be valued the same as a piece of equipment at the epic tier. From this could be seen how precious they were. Although they were of the darkness element, the energy they contained was extremely pure, and in the hand of a grandmaster, their uses would be incomparable. Long Houchen originally expressed the will to offer these magical crystals as a pure gift to the Southern Mountain City, but how could Ling Xiao accept such a great gift? Only when Long Houchen claimed that they were a payback for the illusory gems had Ling Xiao finally agreed to take two. Han Qian directly accepted three of them without reservation. He was after all Long Houchen's grand teacher, and these things would certainly be more useful to him than to Long Houchen. The remaining five were given to Long Houchen, and even those three crystals weren't taken by the Night Temple for free. They would be exchanged for contribution points. As for the specific amount, Long Houchen didn't ask, but anyway, after getting back to Holy City where the Demon Hunt Squad mission tower was, he would get to know the amount anyway when he accepted their next mission. This time's operation was a failure to the demons, but it was far from being considered a success for the humans, and they would probably have a lot to handle from the aftermath. On their way back, Long Houchen had Ling Xiao treat Kia's wounds. After he had just obtained the magical crystals from two devil dragons, Ling Xiao would naturally not spare anything, and actually used a healing spell of the ninth step. Before returning to the southern mountain city, Kia was treated with that powerful healing spell, which even increased her spiritual energy. After returning to the priest temple, Han Qian and Ling Xiao were unable to pay more attention to Long Houchen, because they were all busy with meetings. Long Houchen and Kia temporarily parted with Zhong Fang Fang, and returned to their private room on the first underground floor. Houchen, what is with you? Why do you look so uneasy? Kia gave a doubtful look to the pale looking Long Houchen. Long Houchen replied in a grave voice, It's how you are, he's calling for me. I'm afraid that he's meeting some trouble with his evolution. Kia, I have to join him immediately. Bring me along then. Since the regulations of the illusory paradise could be broken, the world from where how you are comes must definitely be the same. The only problem is that it hasn't been six hours yet since your last use of the tower. Long Houchen shook his head, There's no more need for six hours. He didn't have the time for more explanations and pulled Kia's hand, returning to the Tower of Eternity in a flash under the golden glint of the eternal melody. After his awakening as a God's Chosen One, a certain change happened in the connection between Long Houchen and the eternal melody. There was no more need for a wait of six hours, and he faintly sensed that if he wanted to be transported only by himself, he would be able to return to the Tower of Eternity at any time. If he brought his comrades, although the gap of time needed would be longer, it would not be so long as six hours. Among his squad, Kia was actually the only one with full battle strength. Wang Yuan Yuan had some dazed feeling, thus Long Houchen believed she was wounded. For this reason, after returning to the Tower of Eternity, Long Houchen didn't plan on telling the others about the matter regarding Hao Yue, but wanted instead to bring them back to the priest temple directly as soon as he would be able to. Afterwards, a purple radiance lit up his whole body, and the blood contract between Long Houchen and Hao Yue released its might, immediately transporting him to another world. Long Houchen still clearly remembered about the danger Hao Yue had confronted the last time. At that time, Long Houchen had merely been a knight of the fourth step, whose strength was a far cry from one at the sixth step. That time was indeed very dangerous, but fortunately his luck had been good and he had managed to save Hao Yue in the very end. Long Houchen was now a knight of the sixth step, and after the battle in the Eternal Paradise, he awakened his physique as a God's Chosen One, and his spiritual energy even increased marginally. It wasn't only that his internal spiritual energy had now reached 7,000 units, but his external spiritual energy also grew tremendously, reaching a level unknown to Long Houchen. However, he wasn't even close to his prior self, and thus felt extremely confident in being able to save Hao Yue. Now, he was looking forward to Hao Yue's evolved look. Just how much more powerful would he become after this evolution? This video will end here. Thank you for watching.